Hello, good afternoon to everybody. And welcome to the virtual studio of Inside Art Live. This is the sixth edition of our online interview series with some of the most resourceful personalities of the Hungarian and the international uh, in, uh, contemporary art scene, who are, by the way, partners and friends of Art Market Budapest, Central and Eastern Europe's leading contemporary art fair. I'm Christina Löbel, and I'm the host of this uh, um, conversation today. For today, we chose a topic not only constantly present in the media, in politics, economics, but also affecting our lives every day. This is sustainability, but from a special angle, how it's connected to arts and art business. My interview partner is a very special lady and our longtime friend, uh, Nicole Löser from Berlin, whose mere introduction would take some time if I wanted to be correct with all the details of all her roles, but I try to be short. Nicole is a cultural entrepreneur, EU project manager, an independent art curator, and the owner of White Concepts Gallery in Berlin. It's a contemporary art gallery. She is also a director at the Institute of Art and Innovation, a think and do tank that brings together the powers of artists, scientists, entrepreneurs from all over the world to create solutions towards challenging social issues. Furthermore, she is a critic, a regularly featured author in, author in books, publications, and a speaker, lecturer, workshop facilitator, focusing on topics such as sustainability and other uh, issues such as inter-organizational um, learning processes. Oh, and yes, I almost left it out. Her gallery, White Concept, has been a um, regular exhibitor at Art Market Budapest for about eight years now, and Nicole is a member of our professional board of our fair. Well, I think I managed to list most of the things I wanted to man uh, um, uh, list. And here is hi to Nicole. Hello, welcome to the show. Hello, it's just a big, big pleasure um, to follow your invitation. And of course, I also like to greet all my friends in Budapest and from all around the world who might be watching. Hi. So, Harry Nicole, it is becoming kind of my obsession to ask all our um, live talk guests uh, from all over the world uh, how they are coping with 2020. Um, I do hope our viewers are as curious as, as me. What is your experience so far? Do you curse this year or have you been able to make something of it that you wouldn't have been able if it weren't for a lovely pandemic? Oh, it's really hard to say. I have... Um very mixed feelings about it because a lot of people struggling um, during these times. A lot of people have died. Um, also three of my friends died, not of COVID, but actually um, I couldn't go to the funeral. Um, I think I missed my family a lot because we also were not allowed to travel. And um, what I also, what, what I liked um, about the situation is that we we appreciated natural beauty uh, again and um, so many species came back um, like for instance the dolphins in venice and, <laughs> yes. um, yeah and i started jogging so i think i wouldn't have done this uh, before but i really needed this kind of at least one hour outside um running to the park um and yeah, and this was amazing. And I think the situation uh, we are in, um, we should appreciate one thing that we are all in this together. And I think it's also this kind of solidarity feeling um, I had uh, over the past month and, and this kind of strong unity was something I was missing for a long time. Okay, well, basically then it was good. <laughs> On the balance. Well, I listened to a few of your roles in the introduction. I must admit, I couldn't do half of the things you do if I had a second life, even if I had a second life. It suddenly everything shifting online and you didn't have to waste time like traveling and rushing to meetings. Did things become easier to manage in your professional life? Mm, maybe not easier, but different. <laughs> And I must admit, I'm a curious and impatient person. And that's why, um, yeah, it's really hard for me to say no if someone asks for collaboration, for instance. Um, and I always look for opportunity to learn, to co-create and co-produce uh, knowledge, um, but also, yeah, do things together and change the world to the better, I would say. And mm -hmm. 
plan ahead, of course, uh, otherwise I couldn't do so many roads. Um, and I used uh, the, the past month, uh, past month um, for becoming an online facilitator, workshop facilitator. Okay. And um, so now I do future prototyping workshops, which is amazing. And I met so many great people I wouldn't have met uh, without this pandemic because every door, yeah, to me at least, uh, felt like it was open um, on lots of different levels, on in lots of different disciplines and so on. And I really learned a lot and hope I can add this uh, to my, um, my practice. Oh, I'm pretty sure about it. Then you're, as you say, Neon, you're one of um, one person that could kind of make uh, the best of this online, online thing uh, professionally as well. Uh, how about your gallery? How about Vice Concept? Uh, how did you operate uh, during the lockdown and, and did you uh, acquire any best practices or something that you you um, retain for the future because you say it's it's going to be, I don't know, from, from a very beneficial, any online exhibitions, anything that you think that you would use? Yeah, I think online exhibitions are great, um, but to me the real work is always something different and therefore I think we all wait for for the normal uh, life to come back and um, to meet at least also spontaneously and not um, having this kind of um, yeah thought the whole time that it might be not open or I cannot get in like it was for instance here at uh, the art fairs in Berlin um, for instance the cinemas are also open here um, but nobody goes there because nobody knows whether yeah there are still enough places um, so seats so it's it's really hard to predict um, what everybody is deciding on so that's why um, actually I used the time also a bit to be um, to be open to be kind of adaptive. Um, but we were always uh, doing not only the gallery exhibitions, it was also about project and exhibition management uh, for represented artists. And a lot of exhibitions were postponed to next year. And this is what I mean. So we are kind of under the radar. There are no exhibition openings at the moment because also for the openings here in Berlin, we have to get the address details of everyone coming in. And then in my gallery, only eight people at the same time are allowed. So it doesn't make sense to have these usual openings where sometimes 400 people came. So it's, it's really hard. Um, but on the other hand, I think every one of my artists is super productive and super active and um, they are all producing new work um, yeah creating is is uh, wonderful and they use also the time that they are that they have no pressure uh, to install and so on and yeah and i think it's also okay to to come down a bit and to slow down and um yeah, and to hope for the better so that we can be more creative and uh, more productive in the future. And I guess this productivity will have a very good effect in the next year's exhibitions, I guess. So it's kind of just a, a phase for preparing um, our new life <laughs> when you have the medicine now uh, in the uh, injection. Yes. Okay. Uh, uh, talk about um, your relationship to Art Market Budapest a little. Um, you first exhibited with, with your gallery with the right concepts at the fair, if I recall, uh, in 2012. So it was eight years ago, very long time ago. And it was the second year of Art Market Budapest and the first at the traditional venue, Milanaris. So you've seen Milanaris um, seven times before, uh, practically. If you can recall your first impression um, of the fair, what was it like and how has Art Market Budapest changed in the last years according to your perception? Yeah, I, I would say I was very lucky uh, to got invited by uh, Zoltan Zomeki, uh, the former, um, uh, we, uh, I think it was international relation manager, uh, his position. And it was also great because I presented um, works by Andre Wagner, a German photographer, and Sara Berti, an Italian uh, sculptor. And we showed a very different work um, that were kind of on the meta level of existence and were loved uh, by the audience for it. And it was really amazing um, because when I um, yeah, visited the fair myself, 
I could feel that there's a lot of depression and a lot of hopelessness and so on. So for me, this was really um, great to see um, that art could affect people. Um, and of course, the, the venue was even also amazing. And um, and then I see um, a lot of things for this art fair uh, as a specialty because um, it's kind of a marketplace, like other art fairs as well, but it's also a festival. And then you have a great educational program and wonderful expert sessions and so many side of, uh, events throughout the city, which were really amazing. And I think what I what I appreciate about um, Art Market Budapest is um, this kind of exchange of art scenes, like from Poland, Israel, or Berlin, the Visegrad country. So I, I can be always curious um, how the program uh, will be. And the um, Art Market Budapest, uh, the photo, uh, Art Market photo, uh, was also a great move. And I think uh, with this great heritage uh, you have, um, this is really wonderful to connect to that. Um, and when it comes to the professional uh, level, then I think it's always great to meet these kind of um, yeah, very uh, active uh, gallerists and professionals. Um, so there's always room for discussing new projects, new exhibition ideas. So this kind of great spirit and the relevant topics I like the most. And um, yeah, when it comes, when I look back in a way, I think we have just grown in a way altogether. And uh, maybe it also got a bit more international. Um, I remember one opening, I think it was two, three years ago, uh, where there were a gathering of 35 ambassadors. So this was yeah. really, really <laughs> wonderful. And um, yeah, and I think it's uh, what the fair really give, give, can give is um, that you get an overview also of the um, eastern part of Europe, uh, which you usually don't see in that big spectrum, let's say. And um, this is also what, a, what is very unique about the fair. Yeah. Well, and we are lucky enough uh, to hear your thoughts all the time because uh, you later became uh, one of our board members as well, the professional board of Art Market Budapest. I could, of course, explain what it's all about, but I think it's better to hear it from your view um, personally. So could you explain our, our viewers that what it entails and what do you like about being our board member? What do you do? Yeah, I mean, uh, what I really enjoy is, um, of course, to um, to see all the applications uh, from all around the world and from so many uh, Hungarian galleries and art projects and um, project spaces. So this is really amazing. Uh, what is going on in the world. Um, and on the other hand, um, it's, um, yeah, we, we check in with exhibitors, uh, what details can be improved during the fair, of course. Um, it's also that we network, uh, so we're introducing Hungarians to professionals from abroad and vice versa. And Regarding the board itself, uh, it's such a great and ambitious board uh, that we always want to grow and aim for a great brand, let's say. And um, yeah, besides this unique marketplace, Art Market Budapest um, is really, for me, a kind of platform uh, for networking and collaboration. And yeah, and at least once a year, I can meet uh, with some friends over there. Okay. So, as I said, we are really lucky to have you. <laughs> um, let's move on to our main topic for today, which is sustainability. As I said, um, when we prepared for this interview with you, um, you suggested that first we take a little step back and see uh, what this term is really about. Because mm -hmm. in the course of your work, uh, you often experience that people misunderstand it or don't really know what it covers. So, uh, yeah, if you take, take a step back, then uh, could you give us a short explanation on the notion of sustainability for us in general? 
Yes, of course. Um, so <laughs> sustain, <laughs> sustain and ability, right? So um, it's actually an ability uh, to exist also in the future. So that we exist con continuously or consistently. Mm -hmm. And um, and we coexist as a civilization uh, with the biosphere. And this is actually, I think, the fundament of sustainability. Um, but over the years, uh, it has it has shaped a bit differently because um, we talk about three pillars mm -hmm. of sustainability, and they are also now interwoven into the SDGs. Mm -hmm. And this is. Um, uh, the social fabric, right? So the economic field and the ecological sphere. And um, you can say, for instance, that you are a great sustainable company. And then some people think you are a green company, but actually you are just a sustainable company when you do your business and don't care at all um, about uh, ecology and sustainability for the biosphere. And this this is why um, the term is uh, kind of blurry nowadays. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, and I think I would rather uh, look really at a, at a holistic uh, kind of perspective. So um, when we talk about sustainability, that we make sure that we talk about uh, this whole thing, and um, and also that we that we. Um, there's, there's one new term for that. It's kind of circular society. Um, mm -hmm. And the circular society is also looking into uh, no waste of resources so that we go circular, that there is no waste at all that we produce, um, so that there's also no harm that we can do to the environment. And this would be amazing. But uh, as we, yeah, produced uh, and uh, recreated, uh, reproduced the same um, behavior over the past uh, 200 years. It's, it's really something we have to be all ambitious about to change and it. Yeah, and it's, I think it's a very ambitious aim to, um, this zero, zero waste thing is always, it's amazing for me how people can do that, I think. And, and, and when you think uh, maybe also about sustainable future, I don't know, um, maybe, yeah, because this is the topic, right? Yeah, it is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, then I, then I think, um, yeah, the sustainable future is something um, we have to acknowledge that uh, all humans and all species on earth let's say they have different needs abilities and visions right so and as the the nature um somehow collapses and the climate changes and the species die um it's it's really a time of emergency we live in at the moment and um because it has never been like this before um maybe you know also of the world overshoot day and mm -hmm. um, in 1989, we produced or we consumed, let's say, um, in a balance. So yeah, there was one planet, yeah, one Earth, um, and we managed. But over the past decades, um, and these are not so many, right? It's 30, uh, 30 years. Um, we produced so much, so many goods. Uh, we consumed so heavily um, that now. Yeah, for instance, the, the uh, USA, uh, the US, they, um, yeah, it's calculated, let's say, between four and five Earth, um, mm -hmm. if, if everyone would, um, would consume like them, right? So, and this is the situation we are in. So the last 30 years, we did a lot of things wrong and um, yeah, we have to, to be responsible and uh, mm -hmm. to gain back this kind of balance. And on the other hand, I think, um, yeah, there is there is time uh, for truth needed, and uh, we have to understand what coexisting means and um, how we stay within the planetary boundaries. And so we have to consume no more than just one Earth can give us. And because I'm also teaching and I'm in contact with the young generations, um, and they really believe 
yeah, if we fuck it up here, then we can just go to another planet because uh, <laughs> till then there's technology yeah, ready, you know, there's right. technology ready. So yeah. we have our rockets and can just uh, go out uh, into the universe. And this is not true. I mean, we really have to understand that Earth is so precious and we have to be grateful uh, to be here. And that's why I think we are all in this together in this sustainability uh, and sustainable futures and um, and everyone should uh, do what is possible for them in, in their position and phase of life and yeah, to be able that we can hand over a healthy planet to our children. Yeah. Uh, if it comes to art and still um, sticking to the the concept thing. Um, what do you? What do we call sustainable or socially conscious? Um, is it about the material artists use um, throughout their work, or is it the messages they send out uh, via the artworks they produce? So, what is sustainability? Sustainability in arts. <laughs> I mean, the concept is clear, right? So, um, sustainability actually is life, and living okay. and creating and creation and um, yeah so therefore I think all of what you say um, is relevant right so mm -hmm. it's messages it's uh, your behavior um, the materials you use the goods you consume um, yeah how you how you talk to uh, other people um, yeah, and I think it's it's really not about this kind of competition. What mm -hmm. we need is kind of positive competition. So who can do better um, and who can more contribute uh, to this kind of uh, sustainable futures? Okay. And um, what do you think of our role uh, in the art scene? So we work in, in, in this field. Um, how can we contribute to, to building a socially and environmentally sustainable future? For example, speaking um, from the role of a gallerist, uh, an artist, a curator, or an art fair such as we are. So what can we do um, on our every, in our everyday level, practically, and like in, in um, strategically, uh, to contribute to a better world? What do you think? Yeah, I think... Um... You really have to be cautious um, and mindful and maybe sometimes also if you are a person that rushes uh, through life that you balance it also with slowness mm -hmm. um, and to me it's also about joining forces so that we yeah don't lose energy that we if we want to yeah have the same um, outcome, let's say, uh, it would be much more effective if we come closer and and collaborate. And I think in the in the art world, um, it would be wonderful if uh, lots of small galleries would join um, and become like one organization, for instance, um, or. Um, I mean, they could still keep their own programs, yeah, in every country. But it's uh, that they at least um, show that they are all into whether it's conceptual art or paintings or whatsoever. And I think this kind of concept of an art fair is one approach, but it, it's very diverse, and this is great. But I think to to join forces, um, it would be even, yeah also maybe an option um, to collaborate. I mean, me as a, um, as a curator, um, this is always how I proceed, let's say, and um, that I, if I have a question in mind or a topic in mind that I go around because I cannot find all the truths myself, right? All the knowledge. Mm -hmm. um, so I always look for people who, who like to contribute, who also have this need uh, to talk about certain topics um, and so on. And this is this is wonderful and we benefit all from this, you know? So there's just maybe one idea, but all can contribute. And, um, and this is so amazing when I can do uh, art exhibitions on topics with lots of different artists I have never worked before, um, that, uh, yeah, everyone has a voice and every voice is unique. And, but we can orchestrate ourselves like music, like a like a piece of music. 
Okay. And this for me is kind of uh, sustainability. Yeah. So that we hold each other and give a hand to each other. Okay. Um, Art Market Budapest has always been um, open and welcoming to uh, projects uh, and performances that raise, raise awareness to social issues as well and sustainab sustainability as well. I'd like to mention two projects in our in our talk here. Um, well, in lack of time, um, I can mention only two that you were involved uh, in professionally as an expert. For example, in 2018, um, we housed an installation in the Park of Milanaris that was a uh, part of the Universal C project, and um, it, will, it, is, it dealt with plastic contamination of the oceans. As far as I know, it's a huge project um, with lots of participants from all over the world, and we just shown we have just shown one um, one project part, one installation actually. Uh, can you tell us about it and uh, what the significance of such a worldwide uh, global program is and, and a little bit about the results? And meanwhile, you will answer that. I will try to look for a, a picture to show. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, because my, I don't know why, but my uh, screen turned black uh, since a while. Um, so I don't know um, what you will show. Um, oh. Yeah, I, I, I don't, I don't, okay, but I don't like uh, to touch, you know, because maybe then something yeah. is, uh, <laughs> is wrong. Yeah. So, um, but maybe you you have to help. I'm I'm yeah. blind, you know, in the virtual world. <laughs> I must yeah, say. yeah, yeah, okay. Nicole, you are okay. here. We can see you. <laughs> yeah, wonderful. So, um, regarding uh, the University Sea Project, I mean, this was really amazing because it was kind of um, an experiment in the beginning. I met uh, with a colleague, a digital innovation strategist, uh, Victoria Chesin, and um, we were the co-founders, let's say. We had this idea of the project um, and it was how can we bring creative forces together? Because uh, you also have creative people when it comes to the startup world. So there are lots of people who want also to change the world, to bring in their visions um, and how we could live in the futures and so on. And um, and the idea was actually that, yeah, so, and then we thought, okay, but maybe we should have one common goal that it's easier to join forces and, um, yeah, and then we discussed certain topics, but actually water pollution is, um, I think for me at least, it's the most um, sensitive uh, issue and, um, yeah, and it's always coming to me in circles, I must say, um, because I love also waterscapes, right? So when it comes to um, to art, but then um, yeah, so this this was kind of uh, of the approach, and then um, we thought of how can we develop this kind of uh, project uh, so that it get EU funding, because um, at that time it was late uh, 2016, we couldn't find any foundation that um, resonated with our interdisciplinary approach. So bringing artists, scientists, entrepreneurs, policymakers, but also the public mm -hmm. together to co-create solutions to water pollution. So we thought, uh, yeah, let's, let's see into EU funding. And um, yeah, and then we came up with this idea to to find uh, first of all three partners um, for the project, but then also um, how we would facilitate that, like uh, having open calls for artists, artist residencies, but also um, workshops, uh, picture culture presentations, and so on. And I think yeah, in the beginning we had like three or four partners, core partners and from three countries and um, the idea to travel to six different countries to also collaborate with universities, with the entrepreneurs um, there and so on. But actually um, this topic of water pollution and especially plastic pollution in the waters um, became so popular uh, during that time that in uh, 2018, so in 2017 we started in the project in, in the fall um, but in 2018, um, everything exploded, kind of, uh, because um, so many people uh, were into that topic and, um, and I couldn't say no. And actually then I traveled 12 different countries and um, 
And the response of, uh, of the involved partners, in the end, we had more than 70 partners, including 20 universities running their own courses on the, on the topic. And more than, I think, 5 million people participated in our activities and mm -hmm. uh, almost 2 million followed us on, on all social media, were active over there and so on. So this was, was kind of, immense and um, and enormous impact we also could create because um, it was really like looking locally what what the local needs are for certain water issues invite experts um, scientists and so on also from that area but then let artists also reflect on that and um, yeah and and then um, it was always great that also afterwards uh, networks were uh, fostered in a way, and um, and this was was really amazing. Yeah. Meanwhile, I just found a picture, and uh, yeah, it will be funny because I will explain to you what <laughs> please see on screen right now. So this is actually a, an installation by two Hungarian artists, uh, Erika Kapronsai and Julia Weg. Um, and it's um, the framework of the um, University C project. Uh, they they made this uh, plastic waste labyrinth, um, which is not nice, absolutely. It's 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 really, but it's very very um, monumental. All this plastic put together in in the, in like a labyrinth shape, um, and uh, yeah, we put it out there. So it was amazing. It's really, I think it was very, it was really reached uh, people. Yeah, yeah, and there's also great uh, documentation on YouTube. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I can recommend that. And people were yeah. very, very touched. So this was really an amazing thing what these two artists uh, have realized. Yeah. Also, last year we had, um, well, I would say mega sculpture. It's not maybe not so mega, but sculpture. Um, well, considering the size of an apple, it's, it's, an, it's an enormous apple installed at the location of the fair, uh, which symbolized the notion of uh, the so-called third paradise, a new phase of humanity where nature and technology and science live together in harmony. This is a social art project initiated by the world famous uh, Italian artist Michelangelo Pistoletto and his um, foundation Città Arte, whom we had the honor to welcome in Budapest last year. Along with the installation and Mr. Pistolesto's presence at the fair, which in itself was huge, really, and, and amazing to have such a famous artist here with us. Um, there was a workshop uh, you facilitated, if I recall. Um, what was it about and uh, what were your impressions about the reception of such an important art project in Budapest? Are we ready, ready for it yet? Did people understand what it's about and what, it, what the notion is, what the message is? Yeah, of course. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, of course. No, um, will you also show a picture? Yeah, I will. I will. I will let you okay, know. Okay, cool. <laughs> yeah. So let me know what it is then. Um, but when it comes to, to Pistoletto, uh, this is really also amazing because um, when I was a student, actually, I admired his, his work. Um, and yeah, he was always a great artist, uh, open to all his senses, let's say. Uh, he can... Um, his, his mind is so sharp um, that he can uh, formulate what he, what insights he gains. Um, and he is a great creator. So um, he uses lots of different materials um, and creates beautiful, um, sometimes really site specific uh, works. And people, like to mirror in his works and that's more a metaphor i would say and not um, um, regarding his series that he was also doing with uh, mirrors and when it comes to the um, to the third paradise uh, i think um, what i really appreciate is and highly value let's say is also his um, participatory art projects and he did a lot uh, of that and uh, regarding this third paradise uh, project i mean um, in hungary so far 100 people have participated but the idea mm -hmm. is kind of a social innovation behind so that 100 people 
um, get empowered uh, to work towards sustainability. And um, we use the SDGs for that to identify what is most needed um, in Hungary. And um, because it's an art project, because it's an art work, um, people are sitting in actually, um, you get emotionally um, touched by it. And um, and then the, the workshop itself is, is kind of a dreaming session, um, but also understanding how um, a social body um, is created and lived by people. And because of his um, strong symbol, and hopefully uh, you can show that, um, I think this is, this is really great because it has this three fear, spheres, let's say. Uh, one, he believes, is kind of a symbol for nature. So the outer parts is nature and technology. And the inner part, the sphere, you have to bring in your own to balance these two spheres. Or um, it's also about, uh, he calls it the me and the you. Um, and then you can create something new and maybe you have you can think of a child but you also can think of uh, of other works you do with people yeah, yeah I think, of course yeah. um yeah he is he's really wonderful and he did it in so many countries and and hungary is is also great for that it's so amazing that that he with his uh age yeah. yeah that he made it uh to budapest last year yeah, I'm just showing showing the audience um, Mr. Pisulesto, the artist himself at the fair, and uh, now we have a, a picture of this um, theater actually now and the um, location of the fair. Um, this is the staff, um, um, and um, there you had also a um, conversation with with um, with Michelangelo Pistoletto in, at the Inside Art Conference, if I remember well. Mm -hmm. Yes. And this was also uh, uh, very, yeah, wonderful to talk to him um, so deeply. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Okay. Um, you're also holding, among many others, as as I, um, I mentioned, you're also holding the position of director of art and transformation at the Institute for Art and Innovation, which is a tank, as I mentioned in the beginning, uh, bringing together scientists, artists, uh, different um, sections of, of, of business life to co-create stuff which you call uh, challenging anthropology. Okay, I will not be able to pronounce it because I prepared it so much. Anyways, <laughs> so social issues. So what does this organization do basically? Yeah, first of all, um, we believe in the power of artists. Um, and I think I mentioned that earlier, um, but they can create emotionally and sometimes also intangible uh, works that remind us of our full potential as humans. And um, as we face these anthropogenic issues, I think artists can show the difficulties, but at the same time, they can give us hope. And um, I think this is really what the strengths what artists can bring in and um, yeah and I always love to encourage artists to really um, not only think of of the art scene um, so all the connoisseurs that are already there but also what they could contribute uh, with their abilities and capabilities and um, with the Institute for Art and Innovation we have an interdisciplinary approach um, mm -hmm. so do art-based interventions, you could say. And um, yeah, this is because uh, we do we do want, let's say, uh, leverage the creative potentials of art, science, entrepreneurship, uh, policy making, together with the public to co-create solutions. So that's the main mission uh, behind. And um, yeah, like art itself, you could say, because um, you have to be open um, and um, yeah, and and find um, find a way how you can bring in new kinds of perspectives um, so that people maybe can follow, can understand contexts, um, and yeah, and hopefully get inspired. 
um, because this is also a great um, advantage of art, right? That we can feel and we can we can be inspired. And sometimes even years after you have seen an artwork, you can recall and because then it resonates on a much deeper level, maybe. Um, so it's really about um, yeah, bringing artists together with change makers, let's say, yeah. um, so that we can do powerful work uh, together towards a new greening world. Okay. There's something else which is, I, if I get it right, it's closely linked to your work um, at the institution. It's an award um, that you founded. It's called the Social Art Award, um, and you're also a jury member for this award as well. Uh, which is an in initiative showcasing and revive the best art projects or the best projects in the world who has which has the potential to foster change if i get it right mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i've been given out already two times if i Pardon? Pardon? i've been um, uh, given out already two times in the last couple of years yes yes so the yeah. award ceremony for the social art award just took place during the lockdown so the first time online but it was really amazing um, yeah, to see all the artists behind their applications, let's say, um, yeah. and to share uh, insights. This was really, really wonderful. Um, the Social Art Award actually is uh, what was one of the first um, ideas that we had with the Institute for Art and Innovation. Um, mm -hmm. Because uh, Victoria and me, we both come from East Berlin, so um, I think we always long for the freedom of mind um, <laughs> and, uh, and for independency, you could say. And, um, and I think what we wanted to explore with this Social Art Award is really um, what artists um, are out there that feel somehow connected to the term. That was one idea. But the other idea was also um, how they, as artists, get involved into uh, social topics, social issues. And um, for the first edition, we received applications from 131 countries. That was oh, really amazing. amazing. So, because the term is not uh, was not fixed, right? Was not in the air. Let's say there's there's a lot of uh, different uh, terminologies uh, around that. But social art, I think, just tells you what what could be behind. And um, yeah, and all art artists um, and um, they want to change uh, the world to the better and uh, get engaged with their communities to help them to communicate, express, but also to empower them, to give them a voice um, and to, to make things better somehow. And last year we had a topic of peaceful revolutions. So we started yeah. with that. Um, and we received, of course, uh, also very, very strong and sometimes very sad works, let's say, um, and it was, for instance, from Lebanon, from Hong Kong, from India, and so on, um, where artists uh, had the need to help and support their people to gain freedom. And even the, the conflicts are not over yet in, their, in these countries. Um, yeah, they also, they can give and share hope. So I think this is, this is really wonderful. And with the Social Art Award, we want to acknowledge the work of these artists because um, it's also hard to enter with such artworks, uh, museums, you know, or even um, an art collection because um, it's it's really tough uh, what they what they are talking about and what they yeah. are um, uh, to our eyes. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about um, some. The, the money part as well, but I think, because I think it's something, and it's a very important issue, and I, I really don't want to skip skip this because all this that we're talking about is, is a beautiful notion, and they are really important and beautiful things. But we do work in the business of art, and I think it's 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 um, it's important to talk about, talk about it as well. It is pretty obvious that the stars um, focusing on social issues like Olaf Eliasson. Um, Whatever he does, um, art and business goes hand in hand, and it's not a problem for him or for artists like that to, to get financing or to sell their works or stuff like that. But in general, for, for, for the art world, what uh, can this notion of sustainability 
be also profitable or is it necessarily a non non-profit area you're talking about yeah i think art is always context-based um and it's partly intangible and invisible like music um so i think every period or generation or community brings up their own artists right so um, therefore art is yeah it's always kind of um, embedded in this social fabric uh, on one hand but also deals with lots of different topics right be it history or or futures mm -hmm. and um and the art business um of course values that uh so i think everyone who is in the art business um um appreciates uh this kind of um yeah energy yeah and also um this kind of uh, i mean th there's there's so many artists out there and so many different art galleries um so it's it's really about diversity here and but when it comes to art business i would say it's it's like any other business um mm -hmm. you have to bring and balance together uh purpose and impact of course um so this is why you start your gallery but then you also have to think about revenue and uh, yes and ha yeah, be organized, let's say. And it's also about creating value uh, and on the same time of uh, sharing values, right? So, um, yeah. and um, even you see now during these uh, times, I think um, you as a gallerist, you also have to be creative because uh, you have to give feedback to artists. Um, so you have to also be creative with your business model. Um, and mm -hmm. Um, and you should always try to balance complexity and simplicity. Yeah, so I think uh, there's, mm -hmm. there can, can be done a lot. Um, in my opinion, um, for the moment, when it comes also to sustainability, I think art, uh, some of the, of the galleries, they need to learn to collaborate with more diverse yeah. uh, stakeholders. And you mentioned Olaf Eliasson, or think of Marina Abramovic. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, they are always keen um, to, um, to know, um, yeah, what is inside them um, or how we deal with our species, how we deal with our planet. And I think that's why so many people love them because these questions are relevant for everyone. And um, I think now it's really just time to experiment and um, yeah, and think of something you can really contribute and uh, and then you are like a like a core um maybe in in the streets uh you have your business or or your gallery um so it could be a hub uh, for for the neighborhood or whatever so um but i think there's a lot uh, to be improved yeah uh, according to your experience what to what extent can uh, social art initiatives and projects count on financial funding from companies or state funds and so on. Um, I guess you have some experience in Germany and other countries as well. Is it a positive tendency? Is the business world or um, the governments um, realizing that it's a very important issue through arts as well? And uh, or are we still far behind with that? Yeah, I think it's slowly changing um, but as I said right so in 2016 we couldn't find any foundation that was uh, willing to support us um, but I think also every project is unique and uh, I love art projects uh, and also when they're really big <laughs> um, and um, and I think yeah every project is unique and it always depends on the project idea, um, on the circumstances, on the time, on the stakeholders and partners you like to involve and so on. So you really have to have uh, a kind of plan and goal, what you like to achieve. Um, so you really need to focus on your, on your dreams. I always say, because I have lots of different ideas for projects in my mind, um, that I go pregnant with them and sometimes you know, um, they just plop <laughs> and, uh, and are in the world. Um, but sometimes I, I have to be patient and to wait for the next time. I also wanted to bring um, an exhibition on pacifism, for instance. Uh, I think three years uh, I tried to bring it to, to Hungary, to Budapest. Mm -hmm. 
But in the end, I, I, I felt, okay, every year it gets more difficult. So I just <laughs> have to let go. Yeah. So, um, and this was, uh, this was about, because it, it was kind of a collaboration project and, um, and the countries has had difficulties with each other. It was not about maybe the topic or the artworks in general. It was more the, the, the context. Yeah. Um, and, but I had to admit and, uh, yeah, and to, to, um, to wait, uh, for a next time. And, um, and then when it comes to, to partners, right, I think, uh, now is really the time, uh, that we help earth regenerating. So we, we need to figure out ways how we can be lightweight. Um, and, uh, and this is what I mean. So join forces and we create big things, but there are so many people involved and we don't need thousands, the project the same, you know, so it's more like, um, yeah, be, be, um, very open um, to these kinds of uh, collaboration opportunities and um, and then yeah you will find uh, you will find partners um, that are interested in your works and in your projects and yeah and this is this yeah. is really amazing but I think it is a really positive message of what she just said. It's a very important thoughts. And I'm actually, um, we are arriving to the end of our studio time. And I just wanted to have a last question, but you have already answered it. So I'm just going to put this question in a rhetorical way. I really like the motto of the social art of art. I think last year's motto, at least, it goes like, can art catalyze change? And um, yeah, I wanted to ask you if it's a rhetorical question or do you have already an evidence that it does? But I think you just answered it throughout our, our talk that, that it, it does and it can catalyze change. And I think we can um, round up our uh, conversation with this pos positive message to take away, if you agree. <laughs> yeah, for sure. I mean, it's uh, it's a kind of a rhetorical question on one hand, um, and also maybe to invite more artists uh, yeah. on the journey, and um, yeah, and to feel uh, to feel also the need uh, to contribute uh, to the world, and um, because I think it's it's not about only art and artists, right? I mean, um, they can sense uh, circumstances and. Um, and I think they should use their um, abilities and capabilities um, to, to help us um, visualize and communicate and um, what we really need and want in mm -hmm. the future. And, um, and I think yeah, they are so tremendously needed everywhere, really. And, um, and therefore, I really... Uh, hope and I, I make a wish um, that they all join forces uh, for a better yeah. world. I hope it will be like that. So, mm -hmm. so much, Nicole, for your time. I learned a lot in the last um, 50, 60 minutes, and I'm pretty sure our viewers enjoyed this as well. So I, I wish you a lot of success in your future product, projects, which I have, I'm pretty sure you have a lot of things in your mind in the future as well. And we hope to see you in Budapest very soon. Yeah. Uh, thank you so much. It was a very great pleasure um, to talk to you. Um, and yeah, of course, I mean, we will have a booth uh, at the Art Market Budapest and um, present two, um, two female artists, um, Julia Weg and Sarah Berti. And this is, uh, this is an invitation to you. So Okay. I can't wait to see that. <laughs> uh, thank you, Nicole. Thank you. Bye-bye. So thank you for um, joining us today again. We have one more episode coming up next Monday before we conclude the first season of Inside Art Live. Attila Ladeni, the founding director of Art Market Budapest, will talk to uh, Albert Lasto Barabashi, the world-famous network scientist, who has a strong connection to contemporary art in both a professional and in a personal way. Check out the details of this episode on our Facebook later today. Also, don't forget Art Market Budapest is closer every day. So come and visit us at Milanarish between, uh, 20, um, between the 22nd and 25th of October. You can find all the useful information about the fair on our website or also on our Facebook page. 
Thank you so much for listening and joining us today and watching us. Have a great evening. Bye-bye.